Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back at home after our first foray through a static translocator, and that was exciting. We found a couple neat goodies, mostly bony soil, and we found claystone and many other places to explore, along with mostly the same traders we've seen before. However, I did start panning some of that bony soil since I had a few minutes between episodes, and I wanted to show you what we got. Just a few things, nothing super crazy here. Got a new diamond, and a rusty gear, and some other odds and ends. We did get a new book, and we're kind of getting toward the end of the books that we can add to our journal, but let's see if we can add this one anyway. Ah, we can. Okay. So it looks like we have finally filled out Reflection. I will put it on screen here briefly, but we will eventually actually read it together. It looks like... I think this might be it. Maybe both of these pages? I'm not sure. But there you go. Reflections, part 505. Anyway, today we are back at the estate and we are going to stay here. I love those shadows. Great. We're going to be working on the estate today. And in particular, I have some builds in mind that I want to get to in the near future but I don't quite know exactly where to place them because I want to make sure that our roads run close enough to our builds, but not too close, and to make sure that we don't crowd our other builds out. Like, I don't want to put something right up against the greenhouse right here where there wouldn't be any light coming in and we wouldn't be able to see it from this side anyway. So what I think I want to do today is I want to start laying out some, but not all of the roads, and probably get this sort of central loop in here going, as well as getting the road going off in this direction a little bit so that we can have some space to expand with new builds. And I want to hook up the greenhouse to the roads and the barn. Now the barn is hooked up on that side, but I want to have the path coming out to the loop on this side. I also want to start running the road that will come out of our estate right down here and have it coming down this direction. I'm not exactly sure how far it's going to come out or how quickly it'll descend, but I want to get that started and get some of that terraforming done because terraforming in Vintage Story is very slow, especially compared to the other block game. And so I want to get some of that started and maybe if we can get the road in, but the terraforming may take a while. Now I am going to kind of use the poor man's terraforming method, which is where I will be sort of just laying out the surface, one or two blocks thick, and then underneath I'm just going to slab it or cover it with stones so that drifters don't spawn there. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll know that today is episode 39, and in the past we've sort of used each ninth episode of the age to prepare for entering into the next age. Now currently we are in the Iron Age, and there is one more age after this, the Steel Age. However, accessing the Steel Age is a little bit different than the rest of them, because we're not looking for a new mineral, per se, like iron or tin. We're looking for a new stone called Bauxite. And Bauxite is a bright orange stone, and it works like every other stone type. You can get cobblestone and polished stone and so on out of it but it can also be run through the pulverizer to create bauxite powder, which when you mix it with quartz powder and fire clay, you can make refractory bricks, which are used to make the furnaces you need to make steel. However, you can't just prospect for bauxite. You have to go out and find it, because it's a stone type, just like limestone or slate or shale or granite. And so you have to find the stone on your own without using the prospecting pick, and despite the amount of adventuring we've done, we haven't come across any yet. So we're going to need to do some hardcore exploration first, and maybe take some complete core samples in various areas of the world until we find it. This could take a while. So I think what I'd like to do is sort of do occasional exploration episodes like we've been doing. And once we find some bauxite, we'll bring it back and we'll start the steel process when that opportunity arises.
And here we have the start of our loop. Actually, the mostly finished loop. As you can see, it forms a loop. And in this area is where I want to start decorating with some trees. I think it would be really cool to bring back at least one of those redwood seeds and plant it like right in the middle here. And then maybe even two, like one sort of here or even a third to make a little cluster and then put pine trees around the edges. Just a few. And that would give the area some definition because our house is like way higher than any trees grow, aside from the redwoods. And I mean, if you look at your own house in real life, well, one, your house probably isn't 50 meters tall, but two, if you're in a temperate area, your trees are probably taller than your house, unless you have just dogwoods and magnolias and such. So I think it would be cool to have some trees that are actually taller than our house. However, we're not going to be decorating in winter because it's kind of hard to see what you're doing like when we plant flowers and stuff their vibrance doesn't really show so I'd rather do that in spring now before we continue our road work I noticed that our cheese from a couple episodes ago was done curing so we're gonna go check that out and talk briefly about the things you can and can't do with cheese let's hop on up here onto our honey barrel and not fall in I guess so when unwaxed cheese ripens, it turns orange, and you have cheddar cheese. Now, this wheel of cheese has a total of four slices, and each slice has 240 satiation. As far as efficiency is concerned, if you're comparing the amount of satiation in a wheel of cheese versus the amount of satiation in a full barrel of cottage cheese, the barrel of cottage cheese wins out every time, because each bowl of cottage cheese is going to be 140 satiation and a wheel of cheese represents half of a full barrel, so you do the math, but the cottage cheese wins out big time. However, the cheese lasts a lot longer. So I was wrong. I thought it lasted something like two years on the shelf. No, it lasts six and a half years on the shelf. So waxing cheese is probably not worth it, I'm going to just go ahead and say. In your inventory, unwaxed cheese lasts 1.7 years. So you take this on long journeys and expect to be eating well for a while. Now, cooking. Cooking with cheese. The cheese wheel by itself, you can't really do anything with. You can't eat it. I'm holding right click now, nothing's happening. You can't put it in a pot. Well, I guess you can, but you can't do anything with it. And you can't put it directly into pie. And we'll just make a little pie. Oh, I need a table. Table emergency. Temporary work table. So the cheese cannot be put into pie, whole. What you have to do is you need to place it and then use a knife, just like pie, and cut it into four pieces. And now you can actually eat it by holding right click. I'm not going to because I want to demonstrate other things with it. And cheese can be put into pie, like so. And you can make a cheese pie. And I just realized we're going to be burning all of our cheese in one pie. So we can then fill up this pie and put some crust on and we have cheese pie and look at how much dairy satiation that gives 1920 that's as wide as my monitor so just like any other pie we can toss it in the oven and we're just going to put this many logs in here and we can bake it like any other pie And there we have our cheese pie. Let's take a look at it. So this pie is fresh for 25.8 days, just like any other pie. And it has 960 grain and 1920 dairy still. So just like any other pie, we have to cut it with a knife first. And there we go. And each slice gives us one quarter of that total satiation. Let's go ahead and give us an eat. And so let's also see how much it increases our grain and dairy. So we're gonna eat one piece. So almost one full bar of dairy and about two-thirds of a bar of grain. Not too bad. But that isn't everything you can do with dairy. You can actually use it in other meals as well. And for that, we're going to need some demonstrations on what you can and can't do. So I'm going to go find us a wild animal. And we're going to um, send it to the farm to live out the rest of its life. Happily. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Okay, everyone, it is, well, sort of morning. And there are drifters in the house, what? 
Did I just see a drifter in the- how did you get in here? There must be a really close by- oh. Several, in fact. Anyway, our cheese should be about done by now. Let's check the basement first. Any creepy crawlies down here? No, okay, good. And we had er, Oh. Uh okay, so apparently we have negative eleven days left to ripen. That's great. That's a bug. It's not too great. Okay. Um, well we have a few hours left to go for these two right here. So we'll come back when these two are done. And uh, I guess warning to everyone making cheese, I guess maybe don't wax it. Okay, well, I'm coming in from a big day of chopping trees. Let's get inside and check on that cheese, because I have worked up an appetite. And I can barely feel my fingers, it's so cold out here. And here we go. We have... Not you. We have you. Good for 6.5 years. You won't last the day around me. So let's grab this cheese. And let's grab some ingredients. Maybe a couple of these. Maybe even a couple of these. And let's see what we can do with this cheese. While it is possible to cook with cheese, aside from in pies, you can't actually put it, as far as I know, as a garnish in red meat stew. Not in any order, nor in any amount. However, you can make scrambled eggs with cheese if you want. And right there, we can make four servings of scrambled eggs with cabbage and cheddar cheese garnish. So let's go ahead and light this up. It's been a while since we had cooking pot ASMR. And there we go. We have a pot of scrambled eggs with cabbage and cheddar cheese garnish. So you can put it into a meal like that, but you do have to use eggs. So if you're gonna balance your diet completely, you're gonna have to sort of do like a red meat stew with vegetables and fruit and then pies with cheese, or this kind of thing where you do eggs for your protein, cheese and vegetables, and then rely on fruit pies for both the grain and your fruit. But we don't care that much about our diet. We have a pretty good amount of health. So I'm going to sort of supplement our diet with dairy when we can, but not worry about it too much if we can't. Now, let's get back to the roads. Okay, so the first order of business is going to be getting this road hooked up to our greenhouses. And we already have that started here, so Let's just go ahead and finish it out. This should be pretty simple. We're just going to kind of smooth out this land here, especially like this sort of bumpy stuff here, and probably fill some of this in, and then we'll bring our road right from here up this way, and we will meet right here. No big deal, right? Let's get to it.
And there we have it. Our road going out to the greenhouse is complete. And at some point in the future, we will put a second greenhouse here, I think. Either that, or if I come up with a better idea, I might change gears there too. But let's see. The last road I want to do before we work on the road leading away from our home is one going out in this direction. And I kind of want this one to meander a little bit. I don't want it to be a perfectly straight road like the one up by the greenhouses. So I think maybe targeting like a location like this as the endpoint would be ideal. Oh, and I'm starving. So I think that we're going to have to probably move at least some of this pond. And by move, I mean remove. And that will give us some room to build maybe something small right over here. If I can think of something really small. Or maybe just fill this in with some trees and a garden. And then as we bring it out farther this direction, we can expand into more builds. And we'll have to really deal with some of this really rugged terrain, although I know some of this is from me digging out peat and gravel and stuff. So, let's get to work then. And like that, our path out behind the smithy is done. All the gravel is filled in, and most of the path is done. We're still missing a few blocks, but you know what? We have enough room for, I would say, two or three decent size buildings over here. Maybe even one right in this corner. And originally I was going to run it a little bit farther this direction, but then I thought it might be cool to run it a little closer to this edge where maybe in the future we could come down here and maybe cut out some of this, a little bit of that good old-fashioned, very slow vintage story terraforming. I think I just heard a... Oh, hello. Hello there. Go away. Good old-fashioned vintage story terraforming, the slow kind, and maybe turn this into, like, some kind of, I don't know, pond or foresty thing, like a reflection pool or meditation area. That kind of thing might be kind of neat to do. At some point in the future. Maybe with redwood trees. So this is the third of the four roads I wanted to make. With the circle and the road to the greenhouse and this one. I think it is now time to start on the road that leads from our house here and down into the valley below. But I'm running kind of low on stone. So I think we're going to have to head down to the quarry first, and I'm going to do a bit of mining, and I'll come back and start work on that after I get some more stones. Okay, well, after a night in the mines, I now have eight stacks of stone paths, and I was safe from the drifters because all night long it has been high, very high, or apocalyptic rift activity, so yeah, that was fun. Just a lot of rrr, rrr, rrr all night. So I want this road to come straight from our driveway, and I think I'm going to build like a little perch here, just a moment. So from here, we can kind of see what I want to do here. So I want the road to come down this way and be on the same Y level as it currently is, maybe with one block drop. Then I want to curve it around this direction, have it kind of come off at a bit of an angle. And the reason for that is I want to copy our farms over there, over here, again at an angle. But in addition to the horizontal diagonal, I also want them to 
be terraced so that they drop maybe two blocks for every field that we go across. So that way we have a sort of progression down from here, down past the fields, and into the plains below. And we will most likely have to chop out some of this stuff, or well, all of this stuff probably, and maybe some of this little ridge there. But I think we can do it. I think we can. So, let's safely jump on our ladder while we are 40 meters in the air and say, let's get to it. Well, with snow falling and a medium temporal storm approaching, I think now is the perfect time to say that we got it done. I'm actually surprised it didn't take as long as I thought. So what we'll have here is we'll have this nice, long, sloping road with sort of flat sections interspersed with stairs. And I think I goofed right here. I have too many stairs. Well, we'll figure that out later. Anyway... It will come and wrap around here, and here it will go straight out onto the plane. And what we'll do here is that every other dirt block, so for instance here, and then here, and so on, we will have a short path leading to a farm that is just like the farms over there. So let's go over and look at those. So essentially we'll have sort of the same thing going on here. We'll have the path going to the farm, We'll go down a couple blocks, then have the next path going to the farm. We'll go down a couple blocks, and so on. Now, unlike here, where I kind of mismeasured the angle, uh, and each of these paths gets longer and longer as you get toward the end of the road, these paths should be about the same length, because this is actually a 2 to 1, or close enough, angle. 
but I am going to fix this slope possibly somewhat before and maybe a little bit after our temporal storm. And then I will start working on some of the terraforming that's going to happen back here. I think it would be kind of neat to have maybe like a little bit of a ledge that kind of follows along the road here. And we can have maybe gardens and trees. And then we'll maybe build up the landscape kind of out toward it so we have sort of a little bit of a sheerer cliff closer to the road. And underneath, I will just probably drop some stones to keep drifters from spawning. And then eventually we'll build up the farms. And I'd like to get that done before spring. So we'll see. I might focus on the farms first before I do the terraforming. But that remains to be seen. And I'm going to go deal with this temporal storm first. Anyway, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode. I hope you enjoyed our adventure in putting some roads into our little area here and starting to make this place just a little bit more connected. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.